is Iran mining Bitcoin or have hyperbolic clickbait headlines gone viral yet again? Let's talk about it. All right. So this post on X got 4 million views claiming that Iran is secretly mining Bitcoin in the mountains. Now, the reason this claim is going viral is because hash rate, which is the total amount of computational power dedicated towards Bitcoin mining, fell coincidentally the same day that Iran's nuclear facility got bombed. And it's spurring all these conspiracy theories that Iran was secretly mining Bitcoin. Now, I am a conspiracy theorist myself. I proudly wear that hat. And I do, in fact, think that nation states are mining Bitcoin, but this massive drop off in hash rate is not because of a secret Iranian Bitcoin mining facility. Let's go into detail and I will explain why. All right. So first, let's start at the kindergarten level. What is hash rate? Like I said, it's the amount of compute power on the Bitcoin network. So how much computational power is dedicated towards Bitcoin mining? And you can see this chart here, you've got the Bitcoin price in black, and you have hash rate in orange. It's a very volatile line. It goes up and down, up and down quite frequently. Now, the reason this is the case is because you can't actually directly measure and quantify hash rate. Hash rate is estimated based on the speed at which Bitcoin blocks are mined. So Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network, targets an average time of 10 minutes between each Bitcoin block. If blocks are coming in faster than 10 minutes, then the mining difficulty will increase so that blocks are found on an average of every 10 minutes. Now, if the blocks are coming in slower than every 10 minutes, so let's say they're coming in at 11 minutes on average, well, then mining difficulty is too high. Difficulty will drop and the network will continue to target that 10, 10 minute mark. Now, hash rate is estimated based on how fast are blocks coming in relative to this target? So if blocks are coming in a lot faster, well, hash rate is going to increase. If blocks are coming in slower, hash rate will decrease. And over the time, over the years, we can estimate how much compute is out there mining Bitcoin. Now, this metric on a daily basis is volatile because Bitcoin mining fundamentally is a matter of guess and check. Now, if you have more compute dedicated towards guessing and checking, you're going to be able to guess and check a lot. However, it still leaves an element of variance or randomness because it is a guess and check function. So to really get an understanding of hash rate, you want to look at it in a moving average. Here, if we jump to a seven-day moving average, you can see it smooths, out, it smooths out a lot more. If you look at hash rate on a 14-day moving average, it's even more smooth. And if you look on a 30-day moving average, it's going to be even more smooth, of course. Now, I think the appropriate measure for hash rate is either a 14 or 30 day moving average. I personally prefer 14 because mining difficulty adjusts every two weeks, which is roughly every 14 days. So I like to look at hash rate on a 14 day moving average. And yes, there was a, a noticeable drop off, right? We went from about 900 exahash to 842 exahash. That's a nice drop, but it's not this cataclysmic massive fall off in difficulty that some people are articulating it to be. Now, did this come from Iran? No, it did not. And we'll get into that. But first, let's take one more look at hash ribbons. So what this does is it measures the 30 day moving average of hash rate with the 60 day. So anytime the 30 day crosses below the 60 day, you know that miners over a relatively sustained period are unplugging their machines. Now, this can happen for a variety of reasons. It can happen because the Bitcoin price dropped and certain miners became unprofitable, so they turned their machines off. It can happen because of summer heat, which we'll get into, or it can happen because of halvings, making Bitcoin mining less profitable. There can be a variety of reasons why you see these hash ribbons kind of flare, quote unquote. You can see here in 2022, in July and August, the hash ribbon flashed. At the bottom of the bear market in 2022, it flashed again. We had a hash ribbon in the summer of 2023. We had one in the summer of 2024 after the latest Bitcoin halving. He had a brief one back in October, right before the Bitcoin price ripped. And we had one earlier this year in February after Bitcoin drew down from over 100,000 towards the 80 to 90K range. And we can start to see another hash ribbon maybe forming here. If we zoom this chart way, way in, you can see, of course, the 30-day moving average is dropping because of the recent 
slow block period, the recent drop in network hash rate. Now, this is a relative chart of the Bitcoin hash rate. Let me move my face here. You can see this is the projected next difficulty adjustment, about 9% drop, which is the largest since 2021 when China banned Bitcoin mining. So this is a significant development, but is it Iran? No, it's not. Let's get into it. So this chart here, kind of complicated. And if you're not familiar with energy markets, it may take a couple of times watching this video to digest what's going on here. Bitcoin miners are becoming heavily integrated with energy grids. And this trend is accelerating, and it's a very good thing. It prevents blackouts, it results in lower electricity prices for consumers, and it results in lower electricity prices for Bitcoin miners. Let's dive into this. So during extreme temperatures, whether it's really hot or really cold, there is an increased demand for energy. This is simple. If it's really hot outside, everyone's going to be running their air conditioning. If it's really cold outside, everyone's going to be blasting their heat. And so energy producers, they need to be able to produce enough power to supply the market during times of peak demand. So for example, right now it's mid to late June and there's a heat wave across North America. There's an immense amount of demand for energy because people want to run their AC, they want to stay cool. When they get home from work, they're cooking, they're running their dishwasher, they're running their dryer and their washing machine. All this power is being consumed and energy demand is volatile. So during times like this, there's an immense amount of demand for energy. Energy producers have to meet that quantity. But for the rest of the year, when energy demand is not that high, they don't want to be wasting all this power capacity. They want to have the ability to produce just enough power to meet peak demand. Because if you don't, you have blackouts during very extreme temperatures. You don't want to blackout during a blizzard or a heat wave. But they don't want so much that they're just wasting energy and capital for most of the year. So they have this problem, this mismatch between supply and demand. Now, this is where Bitcoin miners come in. Because Bitcoin miners have a very unique profile as it pertains to energy consumers. Bitcoin miners want to consume the lowest cost power. And they're very agnostic about it. They don't care about the source. They don't care where it's located. They will go to the cheapest form of power pretty much under all scenarios. They will find the cheapest source of power because it maximizes their profit margins as electricity is basically the only marginal cost for Bitcoin mining. So what Bitcoin miners do is they provide energy producers with almost a backstop. They say, hey, produce as much power as you need, we will buy all of it. But during peak demand, during the middle of summer, when everyone's running their air conditioning, or the middle of winter, when everybody's running their heat, we can unplug, we can turn off our machines. And that way, you have enough power to give back to the grid during times of peak demand. But for the rest of the year, when it's not peak demand, we will consume all of that excess power. And so what you see is during these periods of peak demand, the Bitcoin network hash rate drops off because the Bitcoin miners are becoming more integrated with energy grids. And many of them are contractually involved in demand response programs that require them to turn off their machines when demand reaches a certain threshold. Now, another reason for this drop off in hash rate is simply the heat itself. Bitcoin mining uses computers. Computers have to stay cool. These miners are running trillions of operations per second and it's very, very energy intensive, of course, and it creates a lot of heat. And so adding heat from the elements from nature is going to, of course, make it a lot more difficult to keep these miners cool so that they can run as they should. Now, as a Bitcoin miner, what can you do to mitigate the challenges of excess heat? Because mining difficulty is about to drop. You want to be mining during that period. You don't want to be the miner that's forced to turn off his machines. Well, the first thing you can do is use a hydro or immersion cooled machine. So most Bitcoin mining is done with air cooled machines using fans, but hydro technology allows you to submerge your machine in water to keep it cool. An immersion is similar, but instead of putting your miner in water, you're putting it in more of an oil type liquid. So what we're looking at here is the Blockware marketplace, and we're looking specifically at a Bitmain S21 hydro machine. This chart shows you the uptime and the hash rate 
for this machine over the last 30 days. And as you can see, it has maintained very good uptime despite this heat wave. So while the rest of the Bitcoin mining world is battling against this heat, Bitcoin miners using hydro-cooled machines are doing just fine. They've been able to keep their miners online. Secondarily, this machine is hosted in North Dakota. So if you're worried about the heat, you can find a hosting provider that offers cooler climates. So North Dakota being one of them. At Blocker, we have sites in seven different states across the United States. So you can create a diversified portfolio. You can have some miners in warmer climates, some miners in colder climates. And this way, it'll allow you to keep miners online no matter what time of the year it is, no matter whether it's the heat or the cold that you're having to contend with. The next thing you can do to ensure that your miners remain online during extreme temperatures is to mine at a facility with redundancy. And what I mean is multiple energy sources. Now, what makes this specific facility very interesting, and as you can see here, the, the chart of hash rate, this miner has had no trouble staying online over the past month. This site, this data center is interesting because they have multiple power sources. So they're connected to a wind power plant. They are connected to the substation where that wind power transforms to the grid. And then they are connected to the grid itself. So they have multiple options as it pertains to powering the data center. So if the wind isn't blowing and the wind turbines aren't working, well, they can run off grid power. Or if there's a lot of stress on the grid and miners can't use that as a source, then they can operate on the wind power. There's options here. And so as you can see, this miner has stayed online consistently over the past month. Bitcoin mining is not easy to understand. It is a niche within a niche. But at Blockware, we try to put out as much content as we can in a simple to understand format so you can learn everything you need to know about Bitcoin mining. One of my favorite resources we put together is this report titled Analyzing the Relationship of Bitcoin Price and Hash Rate. In this report, we break down the relationship between two of Bitcoin's core metrics, which is price and hash rate. How does one impact the other? What are some historical trends we've seen in hash rate over the years? And how can you leverage this dynamic between these two metrics to profit and to mine Bitcoin successfully for years to come? I put a link in the description to download this report. I highly recommend you check it out and give it a read. Why would you want to mine Bitcoin? Well, there's four main reasons. It allows you to accumulate Bitcoin at a discount, outperforming a dollar cost average strategy over multi-year periods. It gives you major tax benefits. It gives you Bitcoin denominated cash flow, and there's potential for the price of the Bitcoin mining hardware itself to appreciate. So you have long Bitcoin exposure with tax benefits and cash flow. If you want to start mining Bitcoin yourself, you can go to BlockwareSolutions.com. You can find all of our resources. You can find our Blockware Marketplace, where you can purchase miners today zero lead time immediately just go on here you can click a miner you can see its hash rate you can say hey i know this miner's online right now i don't have to question whether this is a legitimate data center whether this miner is actually operating the way it should it'll tell you how much bitcoin it's mining how much electricity it's consuming you can get a total breakdown of the profitability so if you go to our profitability calculator here you can put in your expectations for the bitcoin you can put in your expectations for the bitcoin price and mining difficulty and calculate what your future profits will be. You can do everything. And if you want to talk to someone directly, we're here to help. Like I said, Bitcoin mining can be kind of confusing and the best strategy depends on your expectations for the market, your current financial situation and your financial goals. So Blockware is offering free 30 minute consultations. All you have to do is go to mining.blockwaresolutions.com slash consult input your name and your email, and our team will be in touch. Again, to schedule a free 30-minute consultation with a Bitcoin professional, go to mining.blockwaresolutions.com slash consult.